be bound by things that have happened to you. Don't be bound by roles you think you have to fulfill. You do have an option. I think a lot of the time you feel trapped. You kind of make put up these walls, these barriers as to deny the freedom that you have to choose your own path in life. Okay, this is not a good idea. <laughs> I didn't even warm up for that. I just tried to jump into the splits. If you could not see that, I don't know how that appeared on camera, but okay. Get your act together. But hey, gay. Gays? <laughs> Gays, if you are gay. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another video in my video series called Motivation Makeup Monday. I am super pumped for today's video, today's topic, today's whole vibe in general. If you're new here, I just want to let you know I do self-improvement videos, makeup videos, and pole dancing videos. So if that's something that you fancy, there's a, such a thing as a subscribe button that you can press or you could like this video. <laughs> if you're new here, Motivation Makeup Monday is a video series I do that is basically a combination of makeup and motivation. Duh. Motivation Makeup Monday. So I get ready, I do my makeup as I'm talking about something kind of motivational or inspiring, something that kind of helps you set your week off to a good start, hence why it's on Monday. So I say this in all my videos, I've already done my base because like my base makeup, my foundation and all that because I tend to ramble a lot and so I'd rather focus on the eye makeup which I think is the most interesting part anyways, like you know that's where the colors and stuff come in. So I've already done my base and I will be listing all the products that I use in the description bar below so if you're interested in any of that, the makeup part of side of things, then you can look in the description box. Whew. I was not gonna film today because I don't know why but I feel kind of drained. I don't know if it even looks like I am drained, but I just like, I don't know, I felt tired even though I had a good sleep, so we'll see how this goes, but I really wanted to get this filmed. I'm kind of excited for today's topic, but I'm also kind of nervous because today's topic is going to be a more, I guess, philosophy-based topic. If you're new here or if you don't know, I do have a degree in philosophy, but I only have a bachelor degree, so I don't want you guys to think I'm an expert in philosophy. I definitely am not. If anything, my whole philosophy degree, I have two degrees, I have psychology and philosophy, but my philosophy degree like it's kind of a blur because philosophy can get pretty complicated though I feel like this topic why am I not doing my makeup oh my god this happens every time I do motivation makeup Monday like why why do why do I try to multitask like I go off on tangents a lot to begin with you know so I don't know anyways basically just don't take like I'm not an expert on this subject you know on philosophy though I do have some experience in it is what I wanted to say today is going to be a topic within existentialism which is an area of philosophy like philosophy has several different subcategories like there's metaphysics there's existentialism there's political philosophy there's moral philosophy there's analytic philosophy so there's a lot of different <laughs> look at me just giving you guys a philosophy lesson <laughs> there's lots of different areas of philosophy and Honestly, existentialism is the area of philosophy that people tend to like think philosophy is. That's the more like, oh, what is the meaning of life? And, like, what is our place in the universe? That is existentialism. I just want to really give this disclaimer because I don't want people to think that philosophy is just what I'm talking about today. Like, philosophy can get really actually hard and complicated. Analytic philosophy is really hard. It's very logical, almost like mathematical. Like, lo lo I mean, math is logic, basically. So I don't want you guys to think that philosophy is just a bunch of, sounds like a bunch of hippies talking about the meaning of life. That is not all of philosophy, though it is a section of philosophy. Because I hate that stereotype. Philosophy is so much more than just like, oh, what is life? That is literally just one area of philosophy. Anyways, today I'm gonna to be talking about an existentialist with the name Jean-Paul Sartre. I don't know if it's Sartre or Sartre. I'm gonna say Sartre because I think that's what we called him in class, but then again, my teacher also called Søren Kierkegaard for Kierkegaard. He's a Danish philosopher. Anyways, I'm gonna call him Sartre just because I'm not sure if that's correct, but I'm gonna call him Sartre. You might have heard of him because he's a fairly recent philosopher. Like, all the existentialists are fairly recent. So I want to talk about Sartre. He talks about this notion of bad faith. But before I, like, start actually talking about bad faith, I have to talk about a few other principles that bad faith builds upon. So this is basically, a lot of philosophy is like this. Like, you gotta explain a bunch of terms or concepts before you actually, like, get to the main term. So buckle the fuck in. You guys let me know if this is too heavy or like too nerdy or something, like if you guys don't like this kind of stuff. I don't think this is hard to understand, it's a fairly easy thing to understand. It's not like super analytic, logical philosophy. This is more like, like I said, What is life? What is the meaning of life? 
kind of like hippie shit. So yeah, I'm gonna just get going. So I want to start by talking about the concept of essence. And now essence obviously is a familiar word to us. Like we use it honestly, almost in a way a philosopher does. Like it is what it sounds like. You know, what is the essence of a knife? To cut things. It's kind of like what something's meant to be or what something has to do or like to be that. I don't know how to explain that. Like the essence of a knife is to cut things. The essence of a bus is to transport something from point A to B. The essence of a phone is to transmit information. Like, I don't know, the essence is of something is what it's meant to be, what it's destined to be, what it has to do or is used for. I don't know. Another discussion in within the realm of essence, and this isn't an existentialist principle, this is just ac actually a principle that's been discussed in philosophy for like years since the ancient, ancient Greeks, so it's nothing new to like existentialism. But yeah, another interesting thing, I could go off on a tangent about essence, but you know, for example, when you think of a table, what is the essence of a table? So, you know, you'd be like, oh, well, it has four legs and a flat surface. But then what if it doesn't have legs? What if it's suspended from the ceiling? Then it's still a table. So it, it, within the discussion of essence, you can go into like what makes some what makes or breaks something and it, it is actually becomes interesting with regards to personhood like what is you what is the essence of you like, if you lose your memory are you still you you can get into even deeper with like alzheimer's and stuff like are you still you when you're deep into Alzheim alzheimer's anyways <laughs> that got real deep real quick. What kind of started happening with existentialism is that people started questioning, you know, what is the essence of a human? Or at least Sartre did that for sure. So then he asked the same question. What is a human meant to do? How is a human meant to be? And nowadays biologists might say, well, we're meant to reproduce, we're meant to procreate and defy entropy. That is what we're meant to do, like put her to do. But then, you know, I don't know if you know the philosopher Alan Watts. He's a fairly recent philosopher too. I'm gonna put a little clip in here from Alan Watts. He talks about, well, the purpose is to reproduce, but then it's like, why reproduce? If you keep asking why, there's no, you can't really get to an answer of like, what a human's meant to do. Like if you follow the scientific thingy to its end. <laughs> like the birds in the trees go, tree, 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 what's it all about? Everybody tries to say, ah, oh, it's just a mating call. It's purposeful to get their mate, you know, attract them with a song. That's why they have colors, butterflies have eyes on them, self-protection, engineering view of the universe. Why do that? They say, well, it's because they need to survive. Oh, why survive? What's that for? Well, to survive. And they say, well, that's terribly serious. That's awfully important. We've got to keep on doing this. <laughs> By the way, I'm doing a ha Halloween look. Wow. <laughs> Valentine's look right now, like I'm doing red. Existentialism kind of came in a time where people were starting to become less religious, so people needed to find meaning in some other way than like, a, you know, religion. So a lot of religions kind of work on the idea that we have a predetermined essence. Like humans are meant to be like A, B, C, D, like, you know, what is that, the 12 commandments? Humans are meant to be or act in a certain way. This is how humans are like predisposed to be or like, I don't know, I'm not explaining it. So there is the idea that essence precedes existence. So you're already given an essence before you're born kind of a thing. So existentialists basically just came along and they're like, wait a minute, there's not really a certain way humans are meant to be. Like, it's like, it's not like humans are created to cut things or to do this or to do that. And so Sartre started this whole idea that existence precedes essence, which is the idea that, you know, total opposite to the religious idea that we're actually kind of just like thrown into existence, kind of like I mentioned in my one video on why you feel lost, I'll link it up here, how we're born in into a booming, buzzing confusion. <laughs> how we're born into a booming, buzzing confusion. Like, we're kind of born confused as fuck. Like, what the fuck's going on? Sartre basically thinks that throughout life, we create our own essence. Like, we kind of bring our own purpose. We're not given a predetermined purpose or a predetermined idea of what we are. We actually, like, throughout our lives, create our own reality, basically, is the, the, the idea. So yeah, he talks a lot about this thrownness. <laughs> So we're thrown into existence, like I just said, into boomy buzz and confusion. You know, unlike a knife, we are not born to be A, B, and C, or I don't know, like it's kind of, yeah. I, I think I explained it enough. I don't have to like repeat it a million times. He's also a big proponent of this whole idea that I am what I do. 
kind of a thing like basically you have a responsibility to you know your actions define who you are kind of a thing kind of came from him probably other people too but so I have some more terms I just want to explain really quickly here and it's so funny with philosophers how they like come up with new terms for things or like a bunch of different terms for the same thing so I want to start by talking about the ensoy I'm probably saying that totally wrong because it's French I'm gonna put it up here the ensoy slash being in itself slash facticity I'm gonna call it facticity because it's the one that makes the most sense to me so facticity is so he thinks basically I should have said this first but he thinks we have kind of two parts of our being as opposed to a knife that only has one part which is a facticity part so the first part is facticity and the second one is transcendence slash the poor soy slash being for itself I'm gonna use just facticity and transcendence because it's easier that way and it makes the most sense to me but I mean that might just be me the first part of being is being with capital B which means us humans <laughs> kind of anthropocentric but whatever is facticity and this is the part of us that's kind of static passive set in stone and like unconscious so it, it is basically like I don't know there's certain parts of us that we can't change our eye color or certain facts that's kind of how I like to look at it like facticity fact that's how I looked at it and also facticity might be like you went through a rough childhood. This is a fact of your life. You can't change it. The transcendent part is the more active part, the one that can overcome its facticity, hence the word transcendence. It's changeable and it's conscious. So it's kind of like our consciousness, I feel. Like, don't have to make it more complicated than that. A knife would only have facticity or any other object that is used for one purpose, whereas a human is both. It's both made of facticity and transcendence. And Sartre basically argues that there's two ways a human can, like, live with these two sides of themselves. One is living in bad faith, which is the one I really want to talk about today. And one is living constantly trying to transcend your facticity. So constantly kind of trying to be more than just a static, unconscious thing. <laughs> So, yeah, and then the last thing I want to talk about before we talk about the actual bad faith. A big part of Sartre's idea of bad faith comes from the fact that he thinks we're all fundamentally free. We fundamentally can make whatever choices we want in life. That's not necessarily to say we have free will. That's a whole other kind of topic. But on a certain level, we're all free to do what we want. We all, you know, have the same options, decisions to make kind of a thing. And this is especially true in light of the idea that we have no predetermined, like, God-given essence. Like we have to kind of create our own essence throughout life and so we're free to literally become whatever person we want to become Which I think is just so crazy to think of like hello Like hello <laughs> Ooh, this is turning out kind of good. It's turning out pinker than I planned But so on the topic of freedom Sartre is very much known for saying that we are condemned to be free You might be like wait what? Say what? Like we're free and like condemned to be free? How can that be a bad thing? Like it sounds like such a good thing. Oh, we're free. But basically this is where this idea of bad faith comes from because he thinks that the idea of freedom is actually so daunting that, you know, in a way you're condemned. I like to like compare it to, you know, if you're at a supermarket and you're trying to pick something, whatever it may be, like say tampons or something. And there's like so many different options and there's so many different characteristics you got to look through. Like, you know, what is different from this one to that one and there's just so many options that it actually is kind of overwhelming that's how I like to explain it like basically that but with life there's a similar thing with, when people fall into bad faith is that you know there's so many options to what you can do with your life and so much freedom that most people don't that it scares most people in all reality and this is where this whole idea of bad faith comes in and I'll get to that after I've done my eyeliner Actually, I'm gonna do my eyeliner and I'm gonna do like the rest of my makeup because I kind of want to do my eyeliner and lashes off off camera So I'm just gonna finish my makeup and then I'll, and then I'll start talking about bad faith. How about that? Talk about bad faith. How about that? <laughs> just kidding. Catch me outside. How about that? Do you guys ever have a vision of something? looking a certain way or like do you're doing something and it's gonna turn out a certain way and then it turns out like totally fucked because same I thought this was gonna look cute and I feel like it just looked kind of crazy like look at this hair like <laughs> yeah I thought it was gonna be cute but I feel like I look like that psycho girlfriend or something like oh, she's sweet but a psycho, a little bit psycho. so We've finally gotten to, sorry, I can't, I'm that kind of, I'm that girl. I am that girl that just touches her hair all the time. Like all my life I've done this and like played with my hair. And <laughs> it's not even as, you know, I'd say it's a sign that a girl likes a guy if she's like twirling her hair, but it's like, no, I just, I must like all every guy then. We left off at <laughs> the main topic of this video, which is, you know, what is bad faith or this idea of bad faith that Sartre talks about. 
are you good? Are you actually like good, bro? Anyways, so Sartre describes bad faith as sort of a reaction to this fundamental freedom that we have to choose who we want to be, do what we want to do in our lives. It's kind of like, in a way, it's almost easier to just have one option of tampons. It's almost easier just to have like a few options or just one option because it's not as daunting and like, I don't know, it's easier to have one option. I know I get kind of stressed out when there's like a million different options of things, like which one's the best one? Like, I don't know. And you kind of like freak out and then it may be even convinced yourself that oh I can't use any of these other ones because of this is and that reason and that's kind of what bad faith is except it is with life decisions so with regards to life it's almost easier to convince yourself that you have only this one option or you have only limited options like I can only do this this is and that in life because I'm so and so this happened to me I have this certain role so in a way bad faith is kind of like settling for things or just you know staying comfortable in life just settling for what was given to you or what you the only options that you are fooling yourself to think you have. So I actually wrote a paper on this thing, topic, this thing, <laughs> this topic, and I'm just gonna read part of my paper. So I say, in place of the idea that we are free, we put limitations on our choices, making excuses as to why we cannot choose other paths than the one chosen. It is much more comfortable to be in the delusion that things are a certain way rather than confronting the possibilities given to us by life. So yeah, it's basically just what I already described, but in a more concise way. So some signs, telltale signs of someone being in bad faith, and by the way, I just want to say I think that we all are in bad faith to a certain degree even the person that's the most ambitious and free in life or like I think that we all have go for periods where we fall into more bad faith than others and like I don't know it just kind of depends like I don't ever want you guys to think that I'm like perfect or like I always follow what I'm talking about I think you can talk about something and not always follow it like I'm none of us are perfect I don't know Little side note over here. One example of bad faith is people saying, oh, circumstances are against me. I grew up this way. I blah, blah, blah. And like, kind of like putting up all these blocks for why you can't do something. You know, I was born this way. I was abused, whatever. But what Sartre may possibly say in response to these things is that these are, yes, these things happened. Like you were abused as a child. You had a rough childhood, whatever it may be. That these are facticities of your life. Like these are passive. These have already happened. You can't change them. But basically it's this idea that we all have a choice on how to respond to them or transcend them in a way. So it's kind of reminding yourself of this dual nature that I talked about earlier like facticity and transcendence and reminding yourself that no you're not just say a knife and static and passive in that way you also have this transcendent side so you actually can take this facticity this what happened to you and make something more of it or transcend it it sounds so cheesy but it's kind of a cool thing to think about like it's kind of reminding yourself that you're human and you're not just set in stone no pun intended like you're not just a stone you know that is passive or whatever people when they fall into bad faith in a way they're making themselves only facticity like they're kind of denying their own dual nature of being facticity and transcendent transcendent yes <laughs> it's as though you're a rock when in reality you're a human who has both this passive side and this active side if that makes sense so i just want to include also here that in my paper i actually analyzed a movie and in this movie it remains of the day is what it's called and i don't remember the whole movie right now but i know that there's this one character called mr stevens who is like a butler and that's like basically him like that's his role i analyzed it him as being in bad faith so he literally he wouldn't like say his opinions because he's a butler he doesn't speak opinions and so he kind of is set in this role and I think his dad was a butler. I've waited at table every day for the last 54 years. So he thinks that he his essence basically is to be a butler and that's his only path in life and so I, I wrote He's living based off a certain believed facticity or essence of his being, as if he were but a knife whose function is to cut things. He is a butler whom only butlers. He loses sight of other possibilities and is, as Sartre would describe it, an arrested transcending which no longer transcends itself toward anything. He has become more of a factitial being, an end in itself rather than a being that is constantly becoming, condemned at every moment to invent man. So, also I write, contrary to the bad faith described above, Sartre thinks we should react to our freedom by way of transcendence, adhering to poor soy. We should not limit our freedom by attaching ourselves to facticities. That is, although we have certain facticities, we must realize that we are not completely bound by them. And this is something a lot of people tend to almost define themselves in terms of things that have happened to them. That in a way is being in bad faith. It may be true, for instance, that a person has had a very terrible childhood. However, what he, she chooses to do with that fact is up to him slash her. 
What you do with the fact does not change the fact that it happens, it just changes the outcome of the fact. You can choose to make yourself a victim and blame your behaviors on a poor upbringing, or you can look at it in a different light and see how you have grown from that experience. In everyday life, however, we may be fooled to think that uh, think that facticities determine who we are to a larger extent than they actually do, as we can see so many examples of it. Yeah, and it goes on and on. I'm not gonna read my whole paper, but I don't know. I hope that I explained this correctly. I guess the take home message is don't don't be bound by things that have happened to you. Don't be bound by roles you think you have to fulfill. If you're working a job that you don't like and you're telling yourself, well, this is only my only option for this, this, and that reason, just, I don't know. I don't know how else to say it than like, you do have an option. I think a lot of the time we feel trapped and I've felt trapped before, you know, and kind of felt like, oh, this is the only thing I can do or whatever. You kind of make, put up these walls, these barriers to us to deny the freedom that you have to choose at your own path in life. Stop making excuses and another thing I also wanted to say and this might come across as harsh but this is coming from someone who also had a rough upbringing and like <laughs> trauma and stuff in my younger days I always, I try to always go with the assumption that everyone had a rough childhood. Everyone got fucked up somehow. So it's like, I try to stray away from the poor me mentality and be like, well, what am I gonna take from that? What am I gonna learn from that? How am I gonna become a better person because of what happened to me? Which is exactly kind of what Sartre wants us to do. He wants us to take the facts, the facticities of our being, and then transcend it. Take it and do something with it. And just realize that we can, we're free to be whoever we are. We're free to create our own essence in life. You know, if anyone tries to tell you you can't do something or you can't be because of this is not reason like it's not even only just you that will be in bad faith there's a lot of people around you that probably are in bad faith and so of course a lot of people are going to be in bad faith because there's bad faith around us everywhere so i don't know i highly encourage you guys to read some sart he's really inspiring and yeah i hope that this made sense anyways i'm gonna end the video here it's probably really fucking long i'm so sorry today i don't have one top comment i actually just want to give a big thanks to like everyone who commented on my last video which was my video titled I might need surgery I got a lot of responses on this video from you guys and also I got some DMs on Instagram just people I don't know empathizing with me some people said they'd had injuries themselves and like sending me love or like whatever heal they hope I heal well and everything and it's just so cool I was feeling a little weird about releasing that video because as much as I want to be vulnerable it is hard sometimes to like put shit like that out because I don't know I've been made fun of a lot in my life and so so I just, I feel like I have that in my back, the back of my head that people are gonna laugh at me and that voice is still in the back of my head and so to have all this feedback from people, you know, wishing me well and stuff with my surgery and my healing, it's just, it really warms my heart. So the comments that I can see here is Jessica or my friend Sharbs, Human Neoi Chica, I can never pronounce that, Dark Star, Merita Fietlan, which is my friend in real life, Naya Sky, and Autistic Reality. I had another comment, but I can't, it doesn't pop up. Anyways, so thank you guys so much for that support. It means so much to me. It makes me want to be more real and honest on this channel. It, it encourages more of that kind of uh, realness like I just said uh, I'm gonna go guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did I forgot to say give me a like or consider subscribing to my channel I'm here for you every other Monday with motivation makeup Monday because I didn't want to do it every Monday so it'll be in two weeks from now I guess yeah two weeks from now will be the next one let me know if you guys like this kind of philosophy style. Any feedback is welcome. Anyways, I'm gonna go. I, I'm just rambling. I like have no social life, so this is my social life. Anyways, bye guys. Okay, this is like not working because my bed is turned around. <laughs>